I'm gonna talk about tracking splints. The tracking splint is a name that I made up. So for those of you that Googled it, you probably found like random stuff. And a, and a tracking splint is how I came to the conclusion that Curvis B was so important. Whereas my friend Marcello came at this Curvis B and, and I would say, you know, I always wanna give him credit because he's the one that first started talking about Curvis B. And he came at it from a physiological anatomical standpoint. Right. He was studying a lot of dentistry and he saw that there was this curve of speed, there was importance to it, and blah, blah, blah. Right. And at first, when he was telling me, like, it did sound like mumbo jumbo. Right. And it wasn't until a bit later on that I really took him seriously because I was seeing that I was drilling a curve into these tracking splints that I was making. And today I'm going to explain what I mean. What is a tracking splint? A tracking splint, you need a lower base splint. I used to have dentists in Vietnam make them make me an Essex retainer and then I would add dental resin on top because I had cold curing dental resin that I'd bought in Vietnam and I got pretty good with it. So I would buy these retainers and then put the resin on top. You could just buy a lower acrylic resin mouth guard. Like they're not cheap though, especially in the US. What I would do then is I would drill the contacts of my back four teeth even. The way I, how did I come up with this idea of doing this? So it wasn't my idea. I had a dentist in early 2016 who was an ALF dentist who was, who would give me a, a flat splint and basically told like with him, it was, I think, contacts on my, just on my last two, but I was supposed to drill them even on the left and right side of the, of the flat plane splint that he gave me. And then like, I was never one to just, you know, do what they tell me. I would just start experimenting and I was drilling, you know, the back four teeth even. So basically like you're taking the splint, using acrylic paper, which is like this ink paper, putting it in as you got the splint on, biting on it, and then checking if the contacts for the last four teeth are relatively even. If one of them is not even, you got to drill the other ones and then you bite again on the acrylic paper and you see if all four show up. Right. So once all four show up, you know that the way that your upper teeth make contact with the lower splints, you know, like the, the lower splint essentially represents the shape of the back upper teeth, right? Or your curve of speed. So then I was doing experiments. So I was into mewing back then. So I would do some mewing or myofunctional exercises. And I would realize that if I did them, even for 20 minutes, and then I put articulating paper back in my mouth and bit, some of the spots on the splint disappeared and other ones got heavy. So that basically says that your occlusion changed, how your upper and lower teeth come together changed, which can be a function of many things like your jaw might have slightly moved, like your arches might have expanded, your teeth may have untwisted or uprighted, like your spine and your neck and how your skull sits on, you know, might have changed. You don't know. The relationship I started piecing together was that it was so easy to change how your upper and lower teeth come together. 20 minutes of yoga or mewing or basically anything that is like to do with the body and a bit strenuous would change your occlusion. And so that kind of blew me away. And then the other thing I noticed is that I would have this tracking splint. I would drill it even. And then I would do like yoga or something, check on the tracking splint, no longer even. But I would, I would not drill the splint even again. I would just leave it. And then I, I would sleep with an open bite. When you think you're occlusion, like usually you have a little bit of an open bite in the back because it's improving the curve of speed. I would just sleep like that so for a day or a couple of days, come back, check. And then a couple of days later, the spots in the splint were more or less even. And then I rechecked that a couple of times, but basically like it showed you that, okay, step one was you drilled the contacts even on the splint. Step two was you did yoga. Step three is you checked for the contacts after yoga, they changed and it was no longer even. Step four was you slept without adjusting the splint. And then a couple of days later, all the contacts were even again, right? So what you can logically conclude from that is that if you do yoga, it probably improves your spine, right? Because the contacts changed. Right? So or something structurally changed and improved most likely because you're doing yoga. But then if you did nothing for a couple of days, it went right back. Right. And so this is why I think like most people that do yoga, they're just going in hamster wheels. Right. And when I did adjust after doing yoga or doing mewing or doing, I was doing a little bit of thumb pulling back then. I was doing other things. I didn't call thumb pulling. I called it, 
I think face pulling, I, I was doing various things, but I would check for all these different things that would impact the occlusion. And I, I was like blown away by just how much different stuff could change how your teeth come together. And then I noticed, because I had this flat plane splints, as I drilled it, where was I drilling? I was always drilling on the front. Well, what happens when you drill on the front is that, you know, if this is the back of the splint and this is the front and I'm always drilling here, this stays high, this goes low and you have a curve. And so I noticed that as I was doing these things, more of a curve was happening. And I never even, like back then when I was first doing this, I didn't even call it curve of speed. This was before Marcello was telling me about the curve of speed. I just noticed that like this curve was forming and this is, I think, late 2016. And that if I slept with this open bite without wearing like a flat plane splint or a mouth guard, then it would flatten again. And so if I checked my contacts again, they would be heavy on the back. And so if I slept with an open bite, I'd be drilling the back of the splint rather than the front. And so if you did that, this thing is getting flatter. And so I kind of had this relationship in my head in 2016 because of these experiments I was doing. And then I think it was 17 that Marcello started telling me about the curve of speed. And I started piecing together, oh, like, actually that's legit because, you know, what I was doing with this flat plane splint, they started to have more of a curve. And apparently, like, you're, you know, if you're healthy, there's supposed to be this curve. Tracking splints essentially shows you that when you do things that stretch the spine, more of a curve happens, right? But if you leave without any support and sleep like that for a couple of days, everything reverts. But then I also had a Myobrace A1 ever since early 2016, and I was sleeping with it sometimes. And I noticed that if I slept with this Myobrace on, not only did things not revert, but things actually improved further. I would sleep with a Meyer brace on, and then I would be drilling the front of the splint again and creating even more curves. So I was like, oh, wow. So if I do yoga, the curve improves. Or if I just wear this Meyer brace asleep, the curve also improves, right? So if I do both, if I do yoga and I drill the front, like it goes even faster, right? So that's why I say that things like yoga, mewing, thumb pulling, they all accelerate this process because they will improve the curve if you're using a tracking splint. That year, I think it was late 16, I would have two different splints and I would run all these experiments. I would have a tracking splint, which I didn't actually wear. And this is important to distinguish. It's like tracking splint has a curve that represents the curve of the upper teeth. But if you wear a tracking splint, it kind of holds your jaw in a certain position because like all four teeth are making contact along this plane. I found it much better to just wear a different splint that had a flat contact only a one tooth, which is what my dentist had told me to do anyway. And so on that one, I was testing all kinds of experiments because it was, you know, sometimes I would contact on the left and then the right and then contact on both. And then I would change and maybe have the contact on the front. And I noticed that I'd wear that one. Let's call that tracking splint number one. Tracking splint number two, I would not wear. It just like, I would just adjust it. So I would put it on and I would do these adjustments to, so that it reflected the plane. And so I would see what changed the plane, right? And so I noticed that it didn't matter what I did, like, contact on the left, right, even whatever, like all those things just improve this curve for speed regardless. And it also showed me like the other thing I was testing is I was using an indexed splint for a while. So like with tracking splint number one or no. So with splint number one, sometimes an index, it meaning I'd bite into this resin, imprint the teeth in a single position to see what the impact on the tracking splint was. And it was kind of like random. Like sometimes it would get seemingly get a little bit better. And then sometimes it would get seemingly a little bit worse. And that's also how I figured out that locking a single bite is a bad idea. Like you go in circles. It doesn't improve you. It probably even makes you worse, which is also what Marcello concluded, I think, sometime in 2017. And so all of this became a lot clearer when you actually were adjusting a tracking splint for this. So how do you, like, if you're interested in creating a tracking splint, like you don't have to do this, right? You could just take my word for it that this works. But if you want to say, you know, like, no, I want to test and validate that what Ken says is, you know, actual you can get a lower splint you would need dental resin so this is acrylic culturing resin you need a dental drill you need articulating paper and then you could actually have your own tracking splint to make these adjustments to see what i'm talking about and you know if you do that 
I think it's a great exercise for everyone that is very serious about doing this stuff to do at least once, but I don't recommend that you do it like an entire journey. Like it's a lot of work. And and you got to remember that the lower teeth move too. Any splint that you have fitting on the lower teeth, like it's only going to last a few months uh, and then you'll need a new one. I recommend like do a tracking splint for a couple months, figure out the mechanics and then don't worry about it. Like I, I haven't used a track splint in a couple of years and you know, you don't really need one to improve. It's just really to see how it works. Anyway, thanks.